it is time to start the chase here at the Canadian Tire Motorsports Park on Ontario, Canada. Welcome everyone to the Crown Royal Truck Series and we are starting the chase today. Diego Yepes, Zachary DeLello, DJ Gibson, Jay Jefferson, you see there, they have the purple spoilers. They will also be shown with purple nameplates on the back of their trucks. That is to show you the 10 chase drivers in the chase grid, the second chase grid for the Crown Royal Truck Series. But those guys starting up front have two road course ringers right beside them. Tim Foster, his only career win, came at Road America last season in the Mountain Dew Custom Series when he went on to win the Mountain Dew Custom Series title. In third, though, Zachary Fitzwater Sr. Last year, he drove the number 59 Ange Auto Truck. This year, it's the number 59 Sauber Racing Team entry with the Marina Fox Foundation on the truck. We're going to see if he can go back-to-back -back at most sport. Larry Hagan, Blake Maurice, Eli Bright, you got a lot of underdogs up here in this top 10. But we are ready to get the command to fire the engines. It's a long pace lap, so instead of boring you any further, let's go down trackside for the commands to finally start the chase in the Crown Royal Truck Series. Pepsi and the NSDCA have teamed up this season to bring you the Pepsi Pull Award for the fastest qualifier in all 20 Crown Royal Truck Series races. And this week, it is your points leader and regular season champion, Diego Yepes, looking to extend that points lead and go for his championship, starting on pole here at Mosport, looking for that first win on a road course in over three seasons. With that, the engines are fired. Diego Yepes, Tip Foster leading us down. 36 trucks, 10 chase racers in this grid, and a good handful of drivers looking for their first win, looking to tear up through the field, and looking for their chance at going in to the Crown Royal Truck Series victory lane here at Most Sport. The 10 chase drivers have the purple nameplate and the purple spoiler on the back of their grid, but this is also a fan of five race. If one of the five, fan of five drivers makes it in, two of them are shown with the orange roof number, uh, nameplate and spoiler that is Logan Cloud and Carter Friesen Carson Bowers Brady Burkhart and Diego Yepes are also part of the Fan of Five program but they have the chase uh, spoiler and nameplate of the purple on the back of their trucks that is uh, overwriting basically the Fan of Five but they are still eligible so if Diego Yepes wins he's starting on pole he has a fast truck and his last road course win though came all the way back in season number one at Road America when he coasted across the line on pit road as his car was blowing up from the lead one of the most chaotic finishes in Road America history but as we are on this pace lap, taking a quick look at the track facts, this is only the second race we've done here at Most Sport. And last season was a chaotic one. We had three cautions for nine laps here. But we only had the three lead changes, and it was only between Zachary Fitzwater and Matty Porta. Of course, with the last lap pass, with Zachary Fitzwater taking home the victory at Most Sport. The, the 21 lap race is about 52 miles, just under two miles is this road course and the pit window 12 to 14 laps means you will be able to make it about in one pit stop halfway but you gotta watch these road course ringers they are going to be powerful Zachary Fitzwater Tib Foster they are nothing to mess with in their second and third Matty Porta in 15th he showed he had the speed last season he's gonna try to do it again this season but Zachary Fitzwater looking for two in a row and Matty Porta for redemption if it's the final few laps Porta, a chase driver, this is the way he'd be able to storm into the chase. This is probably the only track that he could show he'd be a competitor. And he's starting 15th, very far back. The chase drivers are going to battle hard. As you see, they popped up on your screen there with their chase grid with Diego Yepes, your regular season champion, already having a 10-point lead over Brady Burkhart. But speaking of Burkhart, him, Onjak, Kraft, you got Downey in the back, even Stephen Wallace Jr. They have some fast trucks, and they'll be moving towards the front. Be sure to see them try to tear through the field early. But the 10 chase drivers, this is important. You want to get off on the right foot. Diego Yepes is going to have to fight one of the greatest on-road courses, Tib Foster. This is the race everyone wants to see Foster go to victory lane. He has it in the Crown Royal Truck Series. It's been a horrible season. 21 laps. We have just... Uh, we are coming to the green flag and we're racing Tim Foster leading us off the corner. He was in second, but of course jumps over Diego Yepes side by side into turn one and Yepes is going to clear him. You got Fitzwater now right on the inside of Zachary Delello. He'll be on the outside into turn two. This is downhill coast of a corner and Zachary Delello moving up into third. Delello, he fought, fell back these last few chase race or last few regular season races. Did not win the regular season title, and he has no wins to his name. He only came into the chase with five bonus points, but he is a competitor and a contender each week as they head up the hill. Coming down into turn number five, 
And it's Diego Yepes out in front. Tip Foster sitting second. DJ Gibson now fighting Zachary Fitzwater for fourth. As Zachary Delello took third. But this is the greatest passing opportunity you'll have. That inside line works wonders coming off of the corner. And that's what Zachary Fitzwater does. Couple guys going wide there through the corners. Ryan Butcher in the 16 is going to hold everyone up. Matty Port is dropping back. And the field rushes down the Andretti straight. Tip Foster now into second. Zachary Fitzwater, he got around Delello. He's up to third in this Marina Fox Foundation. It has been a year since one of Zachary Fitzwater's best friends uh, lost his life uh, in suicide. And that is what Marine, the Marina Fox Foundation does. They are a suicide prevention foundation. What would it mean to Zachary Fitzwater if he was able to take the win today? This is the trouble corner. We've seen a lot. We will see a lot of contact and some people going into the tire barriers. But lap one, they stay clean. Top four right now. Yepes, Foster, Fitzwater, and Delello. As Larry Hagan in the outside line, Sim Racing 34 is up in fifth. DJ Gibson sits sixth. Casey Mears in seventh. Eli Bright is eighth. He lost his chance at a title when it all went wrong at Charlotte. Ran out of gas on the last few laps, and DJ Gibson had a very uh, big crash at Charlotte. Blake Marie sits ninth, Jay Jefferson tenth, so we have five of the ten chasers right inside this top ten, but it's Diego Yepes in the 77 out in front so far. Two of 21 complete, and last time, last season, we did not have the opening lap go green. Diego Yepes runs it very wide. Will Tib be able to cut down? No, he won't. Fitzwater will, and now now Zachary Fitzwater looking for that second position as now Diego Yepes tries to pull away. You got DJ Gibson now. Casey Mears is going to look for a move on Larry Hagan up the straight and now side by side for the second spot right behind Diego Yepes. It's Tib Foster, Zachary Fitzwater, and you got Zachary DeLello in that 57 right there in fourth trying to hang on as a contender for this title. Fitzwater down. Foster's going to let him have it there, at least for now. And now Foster side by side with DeLello. He's going to be able to take third. DeLello's off into the dirt, into the tire barrier. A championship contender, and that is the end of the day for Zachary DeLello and his title hopes already going bad. No caution as he was off the track, but now Zachary DeLello, your chase contender, out early on and will finish dead last. Fitzwater now up to second, Foster third. It did not look like it was anything with Tib Foster. Delello just got in on that outside, pushed too hard, and lost it. Diego Yepes pulling away in that 77. Casey Mears was up to fifth there, but look at this pack of trucks back here. Logan Cloud, Alex Benyako, Matty Porta's in that, Paul Jackson. They are all nose to tail as they're running around here. And Brandon Morris as well. Forgot he was in the chase, but he is right there solidly just outside of the top 10 and 11th, leading this train of cars around. And now Alex Benyako in the 13. is going to make the move now. That is for the 11th spot up into the kink here and it looks like he's trying to actually clear him before they hit this corner but that outside line just does not work uh coming off of this corner and you see morris is going to capitalize on that might be able to move around teammate uh ex-teammate blake maurice as well but up the straight they go zachary fitzwater is there on diego yepes side by side for the race lead can fitzwater get it Salba Racing Team has prepared the truck for him. This is not a Fitzwater Australia Racing number 59. This is a Salba Racing Team entry. And this team has won both of the road courses this season. Emil Algersuari won at Sonoma. And it was uh, Alex Kraft winning at Watkins Glen. Now, Alex Kraft, he started 36th. He's trying to make his way up. But Zachary Fitzwater, can he sweep for the Salba Racing Team today at Mosport? Casey Mears, though, look at this Andrado truck. The part-time Andrado truck went to victory lane last season. That was with Zachary Fitzwater. Now Casey Mears up in fifth, but the side-by-side -side battle is for sixth between Larry Hagan, who's really starting to come into his own as a road course ringer. Usually we thought he was a short track ace, but no, he's been up here at Watkins Glen. He was had, had a strong truck, even with outside line sim racing equipment. Right now he's in the seventh position as he just got passed by Jay Jefferson. Now Fitzwater all over the back of Yepes once again. Your chase continues tender Diego Yepes your chase points leader I should say now getting attacked by Zachary Fitzwater into the corner they go. Knows the tail. Tip Foster is going to jump to the inside of him. He might be able to take the lead. Do not count out DJ Gibson. Where did he come from? But Foster is going to push coming off of the corner. Up the Andretti straight. Side by side with Yepes. Looking for the race lead is the Anjato number 40. Can Anjato go two in a row with two different road course ringers? The crowd is on their feet as Tip Foster up over the hill into the final two corners. Now DJ Gibson looks to the inside of Fitzwater. And it is a five truck battle right here for the race lead. It could all go wrong right here close between Gibson and 
Fitzwater, but Tib Foster, he's going to clear Diego Yepes and into the lead. The crowd is cheering. Tib Foster leads it, coming off the corner onto lap number five here at Mosport. Jay Jefferson, also a very strong road course driver. He's up to sixth. Seventh, his teammate Eli Bright. Eighth, Larry Hagan. Ninth, your chase contender Blake Maurice. Aiden Burkhart, tenth. You got Morris, eleventh. Cloud, twelfth. Benyako, thirteenth. There's Jackson in fourteenth. Porta, fifteenth. Ryan Butcher in sixteenth. Further back, we go to some of the other chase contenders. Carson Bowers having a very hard uh, start to this race. He's back in 27th, but Brady Burkhart, one of the biggest contenders against Diego Yepes for a title. He's in the 32nd position in that number 99. As Tib right now leads in this number 40 as they go around. Fitzwater now down to the inside on Zach, on DJ Gibson as they go now for the third position. Side by side. And can Fitzwater now get second on Yepes? He's going to try to up the straightaway. And now he is on the inside of Yepes looking for that second position. Tib Foster just pulling away slightly ahead. But Fitzwater and Yepes side by side for the second position. As DJ Gibson looking behind him, Gibson really needs to pick up some points here. He is 25 points already behind Yepes. He has to continue on and push harder. Casey Mir now contact between Gibson and Yepes as they head through. That was through uh, the final two corners, and Yepes is going to be pushed wide. Here comes Casey Mears in the 04. He dives to the inside, and that's side by side for the third or for the fourth position here at most sport and Mears trying to take it away from Yepes and it's still going to be side by side up the corner as you see Foster and Fitzwater battling for that race lead you got Eli Bright back there in the 28 but Yepes is going to clear Casey Mears now Jefferson looks to the inside will be the outside a little slow off the corner there the top seven kind of starting to spread out up front here at most sport a lot of drivers here it looks like this season these guys are a lot more calm than they used to be caution is out the yellow lights are on, and caution will be out. It looks like it might have been the 21 of Alex Fletcher, but we will have our first caution six laps in, a bit later than uh, we were used to. Now Fitzwater, he cuts it to the bottom. Foster was a bit wider. Now Fitzwater, with a great exit off the corner, might be contending with Tib for the race lead as they head up the Andretti straight as DJ Gibson has cleared into third, and he's chasing him down. But you got Foster and Fitzwater, two of the strongest contenders, the two that everyone thought would be able to win here at Most Sport, and they they are right now first and second as Fitzwater will he try the move like he did with Porta last year by moving him out of the line and pushing him out no he won't and Foster is going to be able to lead them back to the caution flag and that will be Tib Foster if Fitzwater doesn't wreck him coming off the corner he won't and Tib Foster will lead us back to the yellow flag. John Dilks might have had a piece of it too in that 68 you also got Cody Goforth back here Brady Burkhart might have even had a piece of it uh, to be fair, but we are under caution. Zachary DeLello's incident uh, earlier on lap two, that is really hard, and we'll have to try to get a word with DeLello later if he wants to talk with us, but uh, that was heartbreaking for him, and now it looks like the 21 of Alex Fletcher might have been the uh, contact there, but it is Tib Foster in the 40 in the race lead in this Exalta number 40 for Ange Auto, and the second place driver, Zachary Fitzwater, in that Sauber Racing Team equipment. The Dodgers really looking to come into their own here on the road courses. And what happens here is Sebastian Kukulon's going to get hooked by Alex Kraft off the corner, bounces off the wall, and he goes back up into Stephen Wallace Jr. Kraft goes bouncing off a of Kukulon into the 94. The, the 21-99, I also believe, get collected on board here with Brady Burkhart behind this. And this won't show. I believe he made it out of it uh, cleanly. But with this first early caution here on lap number 9, we'll bring you guys back to the action in the Canadian Tire 300 in just a few minutes. And we will see some pit stops. Everyone's going to duck on down. We are 7 of 21 through this, meaning we will have 14 to go as they cross this line. That would be just at the edge of everyone's fuel window. So right now, there is a possibility we will not need to see green flag pit stops. But of course, more cautions and fresher tires could shake up this race. However... All of the cars coming down pit road. We'll go ahead and take a look and see what goes on between uh, Tim Foster, Zachary Fitzwater. Likely you'll see two and four tires. It's been eight laps on these tires already, and all of it was green flag. Benyako getting a little later 
in there, but it is going to be four tires for most of the drivers. Jay Jefferson, though, goes two, and Jefferson leads us out. Maurice second, Aiden Burkhardt third. Now Fitzwater contact with Porta, but Foster takes fourth. Morris fifth. Fitzwater, 6th, Porta, Sladek is up there, Logan Cloud, and Diego Yepes, the big loser there in the number 77. He's going to be mired way back in traffic, but Jay Jefferson, one of the chase drivers, with Blake Maurice, two of the chase drivers, I should say, right up here. Both won races and both have those five bonus points heading in, but... Wow, that is some strategy by everyone. You also see some of the damage trucks at the back. Brady Burkhardt's still back there, but it looked like two and four tires being the strategies here for a lot of drivers. We'll get you guys who exactly is on the two and four tires when we come back from this commercial break. Coming back to take the green flag. The pit strategies off the hook over here. A good portion, two-thirds of the field taking only two tires, and a small portion taking four. Jefferson, Maurice, and Aiden Burkhart all on two tires, while Foster's on four. Morris is on two. Fitzwater on brand new four. Porta only on two. Sladek on two. Cloud on two. Jackson on two, as well as Alex Benyako, Camden Luca, Jacob Edson. Diego Yepes took four, as well as, I believe, uh, Eli Bright. He took four as well as DJ Gibson, Casey Mears took four, uh, and then all the way back here, Larry Hagan took four, and I believe the last one was John Dilks and SWJ taking four tires. Everyone else took two, track position key, but will those tires be able to last if you can stretch it from the end right here? And some of these guys can, especially with only 13 to go with green flag going back in the air here at most sport. And Paul Jackson threw the wall onto pit road and spins down the pit road at most sport as well as Carson Bowers is in it as well as they go crazy off the corner. Just ignore that a little bit. But Bowers and Jackson now out after that restart and Tip Foster jumping two spots. Both of the Shade Burkhart trucks off already on his four fresh tires. Morris actually jumps, uh, Morris did not jump Fitzwater. Fitzwater stuck behind him. But if Fitzwater can't get around him, it might be Tip Foster's race to win at this point. But that is heartbreak for Paul Jackson. Carson Bowers is back out on track. So if caution does come out, he should be fine. But Jackson really screwed right there. Uh, of course, these tracks aren't the most perfect. But for most part, these guys, for the most sport, these got these tracks can run fine. Blake Maurice now side by side with Tip Foster as Jefferson's pulling away. Maurice is gonna jump that number 40. And now Aiden Burkhart looking for the third position. Do not count out Brandon Morris. He is in the chase. One of the most forgotten drivers who is in the chase. He's up in the fifth position in the Dunkin' Donuts number six, looking for a battle right here. But Jay Jefferson trying to pull away here at most sport. It's Maurice and Aiden Burkhart in second and third. And we're gonna make sure we have a flyby here just to make sure this most treacherous part of the track. Uh, everyone can make it clean through. Three wide is not what you want to do. Perez on Jack and Butcher going three wide for position. We need to get a shot of that. And, and that was Casey Mears, not Butcher. Alex Benyako now down pit road. That's his day most likely over with. You see Brady kind of picking up some spots, but we stay clean and green. Bauer's not too far behind. He might be able to pick up some more, but Paul Jackson without a caution, he's definitely done. Jay Jefferson pulling away. Brandon Morris and Fitzwater making some contact coming down there. They were sideways, drifting down turn number two, and but they keep it clean and green. The two tires looking to be strong right now for your chase contender, Jay Jefferson. Jefferson, he came into this race with only the one win, so he is still 20 points behind Diego Yepes after the regular season. But Jefferson, he has a truck to beat. He loves road courses. He's done very strong in that Texas Star Racing number 48. Further back now, Tip Foster making the move on Aiden Burkhart. If he can get around Blake, I'm pretty sure Jay would have to be shaking at that point because Tib has a very fast truck. And Zachary Fitzwater hanging on back there in six, but look who's mounting the charge. Matty Porta, one of your road course ringers in the Crown Royal Truck Series. He's up to seventh for Jones Racing Inc. His teammates, Colton Lane and Austin Johnson fighting for the Mountain Dew Custom Series title, but Matty Porta is as well. Do not forget him as he is up into the seventh spot. Tib Foster clear into second. He now has his sights set on Jay Jefferson, but you got three Toyotas, two Shade Burkhart Racing and one BK Racing Toyota fighting. Brandon Morris down, making a move for the fourth position, trying to pick up those points as he is trying to clear Aiden Burkhart. 
for the back. There's Yepes in 10th. Camden Luca up to 11th. Eli Bright with those fresh tires making a move. But Casey Mears and DJ Gibson both on an absolute charge to the front. Mears has those four fresh tires. You saw him make a three-wide pass on Perez and Butcher a lap ago. And this 04 is putting down some fast lap times. He's looking for a chance at maybe even a race win. You got Carter Friesen back there. On Jack trying to pick his way up through. You got Bra Brady is back there as well. Bowers now down pit road. It looks like they were so far back. May as well take that strategy. Might be able to uh, pass everyone on a late race restart. But Carson Bowers, Paul Jackson, two chase contenders screwed over by two drivers just fighting for positions way back outside of 25th position. Tib Foster runs it wide. Now Fitzwater. Aiden Burkhart really starting to fall back. Fitzwater has those four fresh tires. He's moving his way up into the fourth position. As you see, Blake Maurice all over the back of Tib Foster further up there. And Matt Sladek in this 52. The 52 is really struggled to even make races with DYI or Smart Motorsports, the two owners of that 52 this season. And right now they are up in eighth because only 36 trucks entered the most sport race. But Foster really has to try to defend from Blake Maurice right now. You got Jay Jefferson trying to pull away. It was almost two seconds last time around between them. And now he... Foster just cut that down by four tenths. If he catches him by four tenths a lap, it'll only take him roughly four laps to catch that driver. But now Matty Porta all over the back of fellow chase contender Brandon Morris and you see Diego Yepes further back in that 77 all, th all all of the big three not really running up front except Diego Yepes he's still up here in the top 10 Brady Burkhart back in the 25th position but but as they run it's Jay Jefferson trying to pull away now from Tib Foster you got Blake Maurice in third but Zachary Fitzwater hungry in that 59 this 59 truck this season for Fitzwater Australia Racing has not finished worse than 19th in a race. And it was Fitzwater himself putting that worst finish for the 59 back in Watkins Glen. But now Tib Foster on the back bumper of Jefferson as they head up the Andretti straight. Fitzwater clears Maurice and this is going to be a dodge 1-2-3 battle possibly for this race win. But Tib Foster on the inside of Jefferson down the long back straightaway. Jefferson trying to close him off. Tries to throw the block. Foster's going to tuck in right behind him. Might give a little bumper. Look at how close they are coming through the final two corners. Final three corners, sorry. And now Foster all over the back of Jay Jefferson. Caution is back out on track. It's Stephen Wallace Jr., Matthew Eves. That's a saving grace for Bowers, but not for Jay Jefferson. He will still have Foster right there as they come back across the start-finish line. Stephen Wallace Jr. with damage. Casey Mears, as you see, him and DJ Gibson now both back inside are almost inside the top 10 once again as the field comes back around this is where you got to make that strategy call those drivers with four tires can last till the end of the race for sure on those tires there you see Carson Bowers he got out ahead of Alex Benyako so Bowers still just kind of struggling at the back but this caution sure should help him and Paul Jackson try to get back in this battle but Stephen Wallace Jr. and Matthew Eves are the two on pit road with the heavy damage. As the field is going to bring themselves back around. But again, this is where the strategy call needs to be made. You need your crew chief to get on the radio and tell you what you're going to do. These drivers that took two tires, Jay Jefferson is one of the drivers who took two tires. Those those left sides because everyone took right sides. That was the interesting thing with the two tires. A lot of people took right sides here. But Jay Jefferson... Those left side tires have to be burning up. 13 laps is the fuel window, meaning that's how far you could probably push your tires as well before they really start hurting you. And he is now 13 laps on those left sides and just four laps on those right sides. But these guys back here, Foster and Fitzwater, both only have four laps on their entire sets of tires. And these cautions are now going to allow these drivers to save some fuel and save those tires. The question is, a good portion of the field took two tires, and you have two drivers inside this top 10, really. Uh, three drivers inside the top 10 that took four tires. That being Fitzwater, Foster, and Yepes, three of the strongest drivers in the field. As well, actually, Derek Hamill took four tires. So if he stays out, this could be interesting. Don't have a good camera angle on him right now, but uh, that's not Hamill. That is... That is Camden Luca. Derek Hamill drove this truck last season. My apologies. But Hamill is back for the first time in the Crown Royal Truck Series since mysteriously disappearing at the end of the most sport race last year. If I can find him in this field all the way back here. He is driving the number three for 
Jones Racing Inc. seated right now in the 27th position for the Chevy team. But this is why we are live. We want to see who's going to take down to pit road. Who's going to go for those fuel? Who's going to go for the fresh tires? Foster and Fitzwater really th flew through the field and right to the back of, of uh, Jay Jefferson uh, before that caution came out. So does Jefferson go down, risk being all the way at the back, but take those four tires? I don't think you can. And Yep is a little slower back there. Or someone's going down pit road. Looks like Matt Sladek's going down pit road. The leaders stay out. We're going to go ahead and take a look. Matt Sladek goes down pit road for D Diego Yepes Incorporated. So that's both the 13 and 52 at the back of the pack. But no one else is going to come down pit road except further back there. Alex Fletcher. Now do not forget Carson Bowers pit, I believe, maybe two laps before that caution. So he has the freshest tires in the field. And he's starting at the back. He might be able to make some moves. And it looks like Sladek actually just went down for fuel only. The 21 is going to uh, take some tires, though. And as they head around, Jay Jefferson, Tip Foster out in front. Zachary Fitzwater third. Maurice fourth. Brandon Morris fifth. As we're coming around here at the Most Sport Raceway. What happens here is Matthew Eves, Stephen Wallace Jr., they come up the hill and SWJ runs right into the back of Eves, pushes him into the dirt, and the tire barriers, they both make contact, heavy contact for the 94 and 83. And slowing it down here, you see the 94, he was just real fast into the corner, pushes the 83 out, and Eves, he's in the grass, you really cannot slow down in this slick dirt and grass here at Most Sport, and he bounces off the wall as well as Stephen Wallace Jr. further down, tearing the tearing that truck up but Matthew Eves Stephen Wallace Jr. bring us to the second caution of the day at most sport we'll bring you guys back to the action after this back live at the Canadian Tire Motorsports Park and we are getting ready to go back racing we will be under seven laps to go we will be at seven laps to go when we go back racing, and it is Jay Jefferson up in front, a chase contender trying to win, but those tires now 14 laps old will be 15 next time by Jay Jefferson really has to start watching those tires, and I'm not sure if they will be able to last. But you got two drivers on very fresh tires, Tip Foster and Zachary Fitzwater, second and third. These two could be the showdown coming on down with the road course ringers in second and third with Blake Maurice sits fourth and Brandon Morris fifth. Those two also. Only took two tires, as well as Matty Porta in sixth. Diego Yepes in seventh, your chase contender, your chase leader. If he is able to be the first driver, uh, the highest finishing chase driver especially, he has four drivers ahead of him that are in the chase, all on older tires than him. And you also, though, got DJ Gibson, who's torn his way through the field. Casey Mears as well. If we have a late race restart and Gibson, Yepes, and Mears are able to fly up to the front, they might be able to contend with Tim Foster and Fitzwater. And I say that... Uh, not I say that removing Jefferson because I do not think Jefferson's going to be able to hold both of these drivers off for the next few laps. Coming down to take the green flag. We're back racing at most sport. Green flag is back in the air, and we just got to check, make sure everyone gets through. Will Bowers be turned by Ben Yako? No, Ben Yako gets the... Jackson gets the payback on Alex Ben Yako, and Jackson's back down pit road through the magic wall, but Tim Foster now on the outside of Jefferson for the race lead. They're going side by side. And Jefferson going to maintain the race lead. Tip Foster into second. Zachary Fitzwater right on the back bumper of him in third. Matty Porta has moved up to fifth. But now Tip Foster, the inside of Jefferson. The crowd going wild here at Mo Sport as they're coming off of the corner up up the hill, back down the hill into the toughest part of the track, but the biggest passing opportunity for anyone on the track. And Foster has the preferred line. He throws it in under Jefferson, and that is the race lead here at Mo Sport. Give it to Tib Foster in the on auto number 40, but Zachary Fitzwater is going to clear Jefferson, and this will be the battle. Maurice, third, Maurice falls to fourth. Now the chase contenders fighting fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh between all five of them. Jefferson, Maurice, Morris, Yepes, and Porta. The only one on fresh tires being that of Diego Yepes. There's Jacob Edson trying to tear his way through the field. DJ Gibson now has to try to defend over Casey Mears in that 53 and that 04 right there. Yepes on the inside of Porta. Does he have enough? Can Porta hang on? But Maurice is now making a move on Jefferson. Everyone's going crazy. Caution is back out. It looks like the 52 again, and Tib Foster leads us back around. And no heavy damage to Derek Hamill. The 21 of Alex Fletcher destroyed. Larry Hagan's also off further back there. Alex Benyako has damage. Carter Friesen might have some. Mike Cook has some damage. Paul Jackson, it looks like they're taking that car behind the wall at this point, but... 
Restarts have been chaotic, and this is the point of the race where you're going to see it. Of course, pace laps, only two laps, but at road courses in the NSDCA, the final, if a caution comes out in the final three laps, the race is pretty much over. We will be going back racing, though, at 18 to 21, which will be four to go. Derek Hamill, heavy damage. His first start in the Crown Royal Truck Series. He has some heavy damage. But the 21 of Alex Fletcher, he's been in and out of the wall, in and out of pit road. And it looks like the 21 will go up in smoke. But as well, Sladek and Cook with heavy damage. And pa Paul Jackson falling uh, victim to the magic wall down here twice. So... Uh, not good for him on restarts. You got Tip Foster in the race lead and Zachary Fitzwater second. When we go back green, do not expect... I actually don't expect these guys to finish this race now. I think Fitzwater and Foster will wreck each other out before uh, before both of those guys win. But we don't know. Diego Yepes up to sixth, though. And you also have three driver, or two drivers on fresher tires. DJ Gibson, Casey Mears. They're a little further back. But especially if all these guys pit this time by, that could be interesting to see. Tim Foster, Zachary Fitzwater leading us around. We'll get you guys back to the pit stops, if there are any after this. But let's go ahead and see what happened to the number 9. 952 and 89. What happens here? Nicholas Wade's going to get hooked by Derek Hamill off of the corner, bounces off into the inside wall, and comes right back on track. Nowhere for Hamill to go. He gets sent back into the racing line and a horrible hit between him and Matt Sladek. Both drivers are okay, but Nicholas Wade bouncing off, and Hamill just gets T-boned in the passenger side. Thank God it was the passenger side. Further down, though, in the S's, Hagen actually hooks Mike Cook into the wall, and that's what happened down there. We'll bring you guys back to the action after the third caution of the race. Puts four drivers in the wall at Mosport. Pacing around up through the kink tip. Foster leading us back around. No one went down pit road last time except Alex Benyako who had some damage. But tip Foster in the race lead. Zachary Fitzwater second. These two are going to put on a show for the fans here in Canada. Tib Foster, one career win, Road America last year in the Mountain Dew Custom Series before he went on to win his Mountain Dew Custom Series title. Anjato has not won in the Crown Royal Truck Series since last year with Zachary Fitzwater Sr., who sits second. Fitzwater with the Sauber Racing Team, with a team that has swept both of the road courses this season. And Fitzwater in this number 59, looking for a second win. Jay Jefferson, Blake Maurice, Brandon Morris, they have old tires. Their left sides are 17 laps old. There's no way they're going to be able to contend if those top two pull away. But one driver has the same four tires that Foster and Fitzwater had. That is Diego Yepes in sixth. In seventh, Matty Porta. Eighth, Aiden Burkhart. Ninth, Edson. Tenth is Camden Luca. But 11th, 12th, Gibson, Mears, and Bright all took tires. Uh, under that caution, way back on lap number eight. Foster and Fitzwater leading us down. Jay Jefferson in third. Can Anjato go two in a row at most sport? Can Fitzwater go two in a row at most sport? Coming through the corner, will we be able to go green the rest of the way? Foster and Fitzwater lead us down. Green flag is in the air. We're going to do a quick flow through the field. Bowers, please don't wreck. They don't wreck. They're green coming off of the corner, and we will be able to race around at least one green flag lap here at Mosport as they go checking through the field again, and there is no caution. We will be green, and hopefully until the end of this race, but Foster now pulling away from Fitzwater. Jefferson playing very strong, actually, but now Diego Yepes. He got past Morris now all over the back of his championship rival from last year, Blake Maurice. Foster and Fitzwater out in front. Foster trying to pull away just a little bit as they head up through the hill and now down into the kink. Fitzwater has Jefferson all over the back of him, but Jefferson has very old tires. Will he dive him? Fitzwater to the inside of Foster. He almost got there. Foster goes down and holds that bottom line. Gets a great exit. Yepes goes wide. That might cost him. If we go green, that might cost him a win. Look at Casey Mears in the 04. He's up inside the top 10. He has a truck that could contend for this win, or at least contend for a top 10. Side by side with Matty Porta here at Most Sport. And Fitzwater now has Jefferson right on the bottom of him. Jefferson, he took those two tires to get that track position. Maybe he was hoping for more cautions. Maybe he was hoping for a lot more carnage. But right now we stay green. This will be the trouble corner though. Jacob Edson turned by the 71 into the wall. Morris is around with him. No caution. No caution now. And we are still clean and green. Well, not clean, but we are still green here. And Morris Mears is down pit road. Why is Casey Mears down? 
Fuel might be an issue. Did these guys save enough? But we have three to go. We're still green here at Most Sport. Casey Mears has lost his top 10 opportunity unless everyone else pits. I'm just going through the field checking to see what everyone is doing. But Tib Foster, your race leader, pulling away. Zachary Fitzwater second. Jefferson third. Maurice fourth. Yepes back in fifth. In sixth, Aiden Burkhart. Seventh, Matty Porta. Eighth is now the 71 who got into Edson and spun him. Look at ninth, Peter Onjak. Onjak started 34th in this race. And he is all the way up into the top 10. You also got DJ Gibson back there looking for a good points day. Porta now looks down to the inside. Foster continues pulling away from Fitzwater. The crowd is on their feet hoping to see that victory. Gibson goes wide. It looks like uh, John Tilks goes even wider further back. But everyone's still maintaining as clean as possible. Downey is down pit road. We're coming down to two to go. Caution now ends the race. Any caution from now till the end ends this race. And Tib Foster is just hoping and praying. He has enough in the tank. He has enough distance over Fitzwater that he can save a little bit. But Fitzwater going to be right there. Jefferson now down pit road. Maurice is down pit road. Porta's down. It looks like the guys that took two are going to start running out of fuel. No, Gibson's down. Kraft is down. Kukulon's down. We're right at the edge of the fuel window. Foster's out in front. Fitzwater in second. Will these two be able to conserve enough fuel to make it to the end? Diego Yepes sits third. Aiden Burkhardt fourth. Bright fifth. Butcher in sixth. Perez seventh. Cloud up to eighth. Brady Burkhardt up to ninth. You got Nicholas Wade in tenth. The fuel strategy starting to play hands. No one's taking tires. Jefferson's going to finish this race on 21 lap old tires. There you see Brandon Morris. He's going to pick up a lot of spots. So it does look like it will come down to fuel strategy if this race goes green. But Zachary Fitzwater is starting to climb, and he is there on Tib Foster. If they make it, if they can stay out, we could see one of the greatest battles we've seen just like last season. But if they come down and pit, I think we will be robbed of a great finish. Foster now pulls away from Tib or uh, pulls away from Fitzwater down the Andretti straight. Yepes back in third. Battle for fourth between Eli Bright, Aiden Burkhart. But up front, Tib Foster. We'll see. Do they have enough to make it to the end? As long as they saved, as long as they can have just another two miles worth of gas, they're good and solid. Tib Foster is staying out. Fitzwater staying out. Yepes is staying out. And we're going to see this white flag at most sport. Can Tib Foster continue lead and win over Zachary Fitzwater? It's going to be a battle between two dodges here for the race victory. Yepes in third. It does not look like anyone's actually coming back down. There's Brady right there in that 99. He's had a poor day, and it looks like he might be able to eke out a victory. But Tip Foster, the Anjato number 40, they have not won in the Crown Royal Truck Series. Anjato has not won in a year. They just have to hope the fuel lasts. Coming on up now, the long sweeping uphill down into the kink and up the Andretti straight, and he should be able to coast from there. He has now almost two seconds over Zachary Fitzwater. Fitzwater was so close into this corner last time, and he lost it. If Tib goes wide and Fitzy goes short, maybe. But Fitzwater goes wide as well. Tib Foster in this 40. If the fuel lasts, he will claim his first Crown Royal Truck Series victory. Maybe it comes a week late. Maybe it won't put him in the chase. And maybe it doesn't do much for his points day. But Tib Foster, if he can make this work, we'll see if he'll be able to stay out. Does he have enough fuel with two more corners to go? It's been a year since Anjato's gone to victory lane. Over a year since Tib Foster's gone to victory lane. And he's going to do it. Two in a row for Anjato. Tib Foster, your race winner at Mo Sports. The fans on their feet. A standing crowd of 20,000 here at Mo Sport. And Tib Foster has done it. His first career Crown Royal Truck Series victory. Peter Ajak on the radio already congratulating him, crying in his own truck as Peter was able to come home with a 22nd position. Not the day he wanted, but Tib Foster and Anjato takes home the victory at Mo Sport, and there cannot be anyone upset with that victory. 
Zachary Fitzwater Sauber Racing Team end this season with an average finish on road courses of 1.33 for their highest finishing truck. Zachary Fitzwater put on a show and he was just too close at the end. Diego Yepes extends his points lead far. Eli Bright with a fourth place finish. Jose Perez sixth, but look at this. Paul Jackson, I believe, never mind, he's a lap down, but Brady Burkhart comes home eighth. He will be in the fight with Diego Yepes. And John Dilks comes home with a top 10. Carson Bowers, he will come home 25th a lap down, but still better than what he could have been, uh, especially further back. A lot of chase contenders started running out of fuel. But Tib Foster in the number 40, Exalta Dodge, the first race of three that Exalta is on the number 40. And he comes home to the win at most sport. We thank you guys watching a great finish to the Canadian Tire 300 here at the Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. The fuel strategy held up for a lot of drivers. Everyone who took four, at least most of the field that took four tires, were able to stay out and stretch it to the end. But a lot of drivers starting to run out of fuel on their way back. It was a great finish here at Most Sport. And Tib Foster, a fan favorite, gets to go home with a trophy for Anjato and gets to do his first burnouts in a Crown Royal truck. We thank you guys so much for tuning in to the most sport race here on the Crown Royal Truck Series on the NSDCA network. And we hope to see you guys for the next chase race at Phoenix next week. Brady Burkhardt, it looks like, is going to have to just stop on the uh, in the final three corners, which is nice. But he gets to get out and salute the fans with that little cameraman down there making sure to capture this number 99. But... Tib Foster wins the race. Zachary Fitzwater came up close. And Diego Yepes extends his points lead while Zachary DeLello is going to have to have one of the biggest holes to climb out if he wants to go ahead and win this championship. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Canadian Tire 300 here at Most Sport. We'll see you guys next time on the NSDCA.